everyone, this is Margaret Manning with 60 and Me. This is the place where women over 60 come to be inspired. My guest today is Linda Goldman. Linda, Linda is an author. She has written about 35 books, many on the topic of nutrition and health, and also writes a great blog. It's called HealthyOrganicWoman.com. Welcome, Linda. Hi, nice to be with you today. It's fabulous to have you here. Thank you so much. And I was going to add to your introduction that Linda is a passionate follower, lifelong learner of health and nutrition. And that's why we've got her here today to answer some of our questions about healthy living after 60. So sure. thanks, thanks, for, thanks for being here to answer some of our questions. My so, pleasure. So Linda, I'd like to start by just asking you a really simple question about what is the elements, what are the elements of a healthy diet for a woman over 60? What would you say? Well, you know, I think a healthy diet is the same really for anybody. Um, but, you know, maybe it's even more vital for us at this point in our lives because, you know, when you're young, when you're a teenager or in your 20s, you can kind of get away with things. Your body is mm. still robust enough that you can overeat or overdrink or not get the nutrients. And your body is still in a growth phase where you can kind of get away with things. But mm. we know now we can't get away with things. If we eat the wrong food, we're going to feel it somehow. Um, and if we continue to eat the wrong food or we don't eat the right food for our bodies, we, we get sick. I mean, something happens. So yeah. we don't have that cushion of, of um, you know, youth, <laughs> unfortunately. However, mm -hmm. I have to say that I actually feel healthier now than I have even in my 20s, having spent all this time studying what to eat and what's good for me. Um, I actually get sick now fewer times, less often than I did in my 20s. Well, you know, it's true. It's the same has happened to me, actually. I've started eating a lot healthier in the last, you know, 10 years. And I do in, feel younger in many ways, more energetic, more, you know, just more, um, you know, enthusiastic about life than I did when I was eating those cinnamon buns in, uh, in college. Right. Right. <laughs> and not gaining any weight, but, you know, just but still not doing, you know, good things for my body. So what is the basic advice? I mean, you, we talked before about, you know, the, the elements of a great diet, you know, nutrient rich. Can you explain uh -huh. what you mean by that? Well, it's so simple, really. I mean, nutrients come from what nature gives us. I mean, fruits and vegetables and, and healthy animals, if we eat them. Um, and so many of our foods now that are convenient in the supermarket are devoid of nutrients. I mean, they're packaged foods. Um, they, they're they not very nutritious. And I mean, yes, we do want some convenience. And, you know, that that does help our time timeline, you know, if we don't have a lot of time. But I mean, really nutrient rich is just the food that nature gave us that that, you know, our grandmothers used to eat. Um, you know, healthy fruits and vegetables and, and anything with a dark color, anything that grows naturally, that's organic, um, are likely to be nutrient rich, whereas anything that comes in a box or a can or a package is likely to have fewer nutrients. Yes, I, I spoke to someone, and we've actually chatted about this too, that the earth that we live on now is very, uh, the nutrients in the soil have been removed by all kinds of things. And so, for example, magnesium and some of the those, um, not, not minerals, but vi uh, vitamins, but minerals are just minerals. Not in the, are not in the soil anymore. And so we yeah. can take a supplement, but, you know, maybe it's better to look at foods that have those naturally in them. I think we need to do both. Um, in some cases, we just can't eat enough. Uh, you know, if you eat huge amounts of nuts, you'll get enough magnesium, but then you, you may gain weight. Um, so, I mean, I think we do need some supplements. Um, some people need more than others. Some people are very depleted. Uh, but, I mean, yes, ideally we should get our, our nutrients from food, but it's not even possible all the time anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, tell us how we would recognize a nutrient-rich um, food. You talked about color. Let, tell us a bit more uh, about that. Well, it's very interesting. Color is um, every, every plant that has color in it, and including the white ones like cauliflower and those, mm -hmm. They all have certain um, chemical components that are, are very uh, beneficial for us. Those are the nutrients coming through. And um, you can look it up. I mean, there's a lot of information about it. But the darker the color, the more nutrients. So leafy greens are amazing. They have chlorophyll. And, um, you know, it comes from sunlight. It comes from the earth and sunlight mm -hmm. and water, all those things that we need. 
Um, dark purples and dark reds are amazing. Um, plums and grapes and, um, and tomatoes. Berries, yeah. The berries are wonderful. Yeah. Um, yellows and oranges are very healing. So, you know, if you have an injury or, or um, for healing tissue, the yellows like squash and pumpkin, all the things that are in season right now are very healing and, and help with growth, um, especially if, if you have um, pregnant family members, you know, and your, your daughter or daughter-in-law, whatever, those are very healing for, for women that are pregnant. Um, because we have to take care of the next generation too, right? I mean, it's not just ourselves. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I think that's, you've actually raised something really important there. And that is, I think a lot of women in our age group um, really didn't have the consciousness of good eating that we have today. I remember my mom was a very wonderful cook. You know, she really uh, took care of the family, tried to provide for us. But, you know, we ate right. nothing but white flour and, you know, margarine. I can remember some of the crazy things we ate right. um, because there wasn't the education. Uh, now I right. think... There's an opportunity, you know, as we in, in our like we're boomers in our 60s to educate our children and their kids, our grandkids. You know, I think what happened was that our, our grandparents might have eaten closer to the earth. And then in the time when mm -hmm. I was growing up and probably you and most people listening, mm -hmm. all these packaged foods came in and wonder mm -hmm. foods came in and, you TV know, dinners. <laughs> and cheese. I remember my mother giving me. Um, those plastic cheese squares and I kept thinking this is horrible why did she give this to me but you know she thought she was like being very convenient and everything so yes. my mother actually never really learned to cook yeah. um, and I sort of relearned it myself when I had children and I thought well well actually but when I became pregnant that's mm -hmm. when I became yeah. very interested in knowing what to eat yes I think that's a very common uh, thing that happens. I think a lot of women stop smoking and stop, stop drinking. Mm -hmm. Pregnancy can be a wake up. But then, of course, um, in, in, when my kids were younger, McDonald's was a treat. You know, we took right. the kids to McDonald's as a treat. Right. And now, of course, we're rethinking all those things. But I'd like to get really practical because mm -hmm. you are a wealth of knowledge about this. So help us understand, in your opinion, um, what would be a great breakfast, lunch, dinner and snack? a nutritious meal for women uh, to try? Well, I think breakfast is really the most important meal of the day because if if you eat breakfast, you're naturally hungry after, <clears throat> you know, not eating since yeah. the day before. Exactly. Um, and if, and if you don't eat breakfast, it's probably because your body is, is not used to it, but then you probably pack on the calories later. So I think if you don't eat breakfast, it's good to start with a little bit. Um, to me, something with protein is, is really important. And different cultures have different breakfasts. So, you know, I used to eat eggs a lot. And then I found out I was allergic to eggs, which was a big blow to me. Mm. But um, I think really the ideal breakfast is some kind of a shake where mm -hmm. you can actually put in what you want. Like one of the hardest things is eating enough vegetables. So if you can throw in a handful of greens, spinach, whatever, um, yeah. you can use a protein powder, which I do because you need the protein and I had whey protein powder for many years, which is very good, um, except I found out that I was reacting to it and I switched to a, a kind of um, a fermented vegan powder. Uh -huh. And there are some good ones on the market too. So it depends on what your body, you know, needs and agrees with. Okay. And, and you may have to, I, I didn't even actually react to these things, but I had some allergy testing and found out that I, yeah. I was not tolerating those foods well. So I so, had to switch. Yeah. So I guess you, you find your own style, but those are two great ideas. Right. Green smoothies, which I love too. And right. I tend to have those at lunch, but still green smoothie or something protein, eggs or a, a protein or shake. Yeah, a good yogurt or kefir, kef kefir or kefir, however yeah, you pronounce it. I don't know how you say it. either. <laughs> yeah, which is even even better than yogurt because it has the, um, the biological, um, the probiotics yes, in it. Yes, yes. Um, so I think that, you know, something, and with the, with the smoothie, you can really put whatever you want in it. You can put hemp in it. You can put chia seeds. You can put um, almost anything you want, the fruits you want. Just don't go too heavy on fruit because it gets a bit too much sugar. Yeah. So add, I use, I love berries. I have blueberries almost every I day. I love too. Um, or, or seasonally, I might change them and a few, few um, stro frozen strawberries are good. 
Yeah. And then um, whatever protein is good, you know, that, that you want. Yeah. And you can also throw in things that you wouldn't normally eat by themselves. Like if you ever had spirulina without, you know, you could yeah. eat that on its yeah. own. But if you put a teeny bit in a, in a smoothie, exactly. it's really good for you. And then you the taste gets dissolved in the chocolate exactly. protein shake. <laughs> okay, so we got the spinach does. Yeah. yeah even the spinach gets, gets uh, modified a bit. Yeah. yeah, it's great. So how about lunch? Um, well, I usually have a, a snack in between, which may be a small handful of nuts. And mm -hmm. I love Brazil nuts because they're full of, um, what, what is it again? So, um, oh, just, they're just, good for you. I know. I, yeah, but I remember yeah. that you're supposed to only eat three of them a day because yeah. too much is of a good thing. Well, but... two to three or, yeah. you know, a, yeah. a couple. Yeah. I just forget what it, what is it? Um, selenium. It? Selenium. selenium. So okay. Can, yeah. 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 And and so that's a great way. Do you know that Brazil nuts are one of the few nuts that are actually wild? They can't cultivate them. So you're really getting a superfood that is not um, farmed or anything and not sprayed with any chemicals. They're not able to cultivate Brazil nuts. I did so that's know why, that. Yeah, that's why yeah. I have a few every day, just a small handful, and I love them. But you can have other nuts as well. Okay. Um, and it's good to have some I, – I like to have maybe an apple or some seasonal fruit. That's my kind of morning snack. Okay. Um, for lunch, either lunch or supper, I try to have a huge salad, like once a day, sometimes mm -hmm. twice, mm -hmm. um, like really a big, big green salad with any kind of vegetables I have around. But it's the, the base is green, leafy greens. Mm -hmm. And then I'll put some kind of protein. So, you know, it could be canned um, salmon, it could be chicken mm -hmm. or turkey or whatever I have around. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. you're, you know, if you're vegan or vegetarian, you can have some other um, chickpeas Tofu. or some other. Yeah, yeah, something mm -hmm. else. And I would be very careful of soy, actually, when you mentioned tofu, because okay. most of the soy now is genetically modified. And mm -hmm. um, you should really be careful what kind you buy and make sure that it's um, not like non-GMO, okay. organic if okay. possible. Um, we're going to do another video, sorry to interrupt you, but we're going yeah. to do another video on GMO, gen genetically modified mm -hmm. um, foods, because it is an important topic, but but that's a yeah. good um, thing to be aware of when you're purchasing mm -hmm. soy. So that's great. Now, okay, we've got lunch, we've got snack, breakfast. What about dinner? Yeah. Uh, again, I'll have either a big salad if I haven't had one for lunch, or I'll make sure I have a lot of vegetables. And mm -hmm. sometimes in the winter, I like a soup or I'll have, um, I'll make a stir fry of some vegetables and throw in some protein against some fish or chicken. So I always try to have at least half my meal vegetables. Mm -hmm. And and I think that you can't really go wrong with that. If you have a lot of vegetables of your choice, and there's such a wide variety, you can stir fry them, you can, and sometimes I make them crispy in the oven. One of my favorite things actually is I bought a spiralizer. I don't and know what that is. It's a little machine, it costs around $50. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you just kind of put any vegetable in and you kind of turn the crank and it, it makes spirals out of everything. And so I love spiralizing, like I put sweet potatoes in there, uh, carrots, even apples. And then you could put a little bit of like coconut oil or olive oil and some sea salt, put them in the oven. And it's just delicious. It's like fries, except that you get sweet potato fries. So it's way, way more nutritious. They look good too. That's really, that's a sweet idea. That's really cute. Actually, uh -huh. one, one thing I love to do with kale, which I normally don't eat kale unless I put it in my smoothie, uh -huh. is actually just um, sprinkle it with olive oil and just crisp it and turn it yeah. into like a little chip almost. And it's really very good with olive <laughs> oil. Um, so, you know, the magic of food. But I love, I love your ideas. I hope that the people watching have found them to be useful. And, you know, yeah. they're just guidelines. And as, you know, Linda said, you be careful of things that you might be sensitive to, but those are just broad um, guidelines. I think the protein focus is great um, you know colorful vegetables and fruit and fruits not maybe not so much fruits but more vegetables mm -hmm. um, perfect ideas okay so healthy organic woman is your website your blog uh, people right. can go there and check out your articles on this these topics of nutrition um, right. any last minute words for people with their diets in, after 60 you know, I think you really have to trust your body and you have to listen to your body. So if, if you don't feel well, I mean, think about what you ate in the last 24 mm -hmm. hours and, you know, maybe experiment with taking out, you know, if you eat wheat, try going a few days without it and see if you feel better or it mm -hmm. could be dairy or mm -hmm. it could be some specific food. Um, <clears throat> but really, we have to trust our, our bodies and, and not say, you know, the experts say this is good, so I should eat it, it may yeah. not be good for you. So really trust yourself and tune into your body. 
That's great advice. Thank you so much, Linda, for being here. And we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you so much. My pleasure.